In this session, we're going to look at using a ping pong effect to get objects to move on stage. What we'd like to be able to do is control the XYZ axis of a game object and allow it to move from point A to point B and then back to point A again. So let's get underway. So we'll call the project back forth movement. And you can pick the folder where you want to save it. Make sure it's a 3D project. Now in the new project, the first thing we're going to do is create a couple of folders. We're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it scripts. We're going to call another one materials. And the other one we'll need to call it scenes for when we save the scene. But we're going to start off first of all with placing an object on the stage. So we're going to right mouse click up in our hierarchy, add a 3D cube. We're going to give the 3D cube some dimensions, so 20, 1 and 20. And what I want to do is create this so it looks like a ground. So I'm just going to play this at the moment. You'll see that there's a big cube that we're looking out over. If you wanted to, if you don't have the same view, just go up to window down to layouts and go back to reset factory settings and go continue. This will ensure that we both share the same layouts. And if you do have some other things up here, make sure you've got inspector clicked. So we can see our hierarchy. Just click those down. We've got the main camera. We've also got our light for shadows and also the cube that we just created as a floor. What we want to do now is give it a color. So we're going to go into the materials, right mouse click, create, and it's going to be a material. We're going to call this floor. And just select floor. We're able to go up to the colors now and just select this and go down and pick color. I'm just going to pick a green sort of color. And then I want to apply this to the floor. So I'm just going to select the cube at the moment, bring it up. I can either drop it on the screen here, drop it up here, or because cube selected up there, I could drop it down in under here and it will apply it to the floor. So now what we have is a green colored floor. If you don't like the color of it, you can select the material, go up, select that. You can move this around. You can see the color change on screen in real time. So that just gives us a color. Now what we're going to do is just quickly create another material. And this one's going to be for the cube or in this case here, the object. So I'm just going to call it cube and I'll call it 01. Once again, just select that, just pick a color. I'm going to select a red. So that's okay, pick a bit of a bright red. Now the floor was green. So I'm just going to rename this. So I can right mouse click and rename it here. Or I can select cube and go up to its name up the top here and call it floor. Now what I'm going to do is create another 3D object. This one's going to be called cube. And at the moment you can see that we can't really see it. So when I hit play, we'll see the green floor, but we won't actually see our cube because it's actually hiding in the floor at the moment. It's at the same level. So if you look here at the position, 0, 0, 0, and floor is 0, 0, 0. And so therefore, they've both got a height of 1 of y. So at the moment, that's sitting inside a floor. So what I want to do is take cube and just raise it up above. So I'm just going to give it a y position of 1. Now what I want to do is apply the prefab or the material to cube. So just select cube, apply that material so it's red. So when I hit play now, we can actually see the cube in the middle of the screen. So that's just setting up our objects so we're ready to go do some scripting. So the next thing what I want to do is go into scripts and then I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to create and I'm going to create a C sharp script. So this C sharp script is going to be called back fourth movement. And then I'm going to open this so it opens in Mono Developer or it'll open in your uh, whatever your C sharp editing shell is. So once we're in here, you can see it's actually called public class back fourth movement. And now we want to script some things in. Now, one of the first things we need to do is set up a public float. And this is for the speed. This is how quickly the object's actually going to move. So we're going to set up a public float and we're going to call it speed. And I'm going to make it 2.5F. 
Now once we've done that, we then want to go down to the update. And what we want to put in here is the movement of the cube. So if we start at 0, 0, 0, and then we want to move to say 5, 0, 0 along the X and move to the right, then what we want it to do when it gets to the end of that is move back again. So let's just put a comment in here for this. And to make this happen, we're actually going to use a maths function, and it's called ping pong. So it's actually an inbuilt function for us. So we're exploiting a method within the engine to save us a lot of coding. So what we'd like to do to the, the cube is actually transform its position. And we want to change its position to be a new vector 3. And what we want to do is start with the x position. So we're just going to move along its x axis at the moment. And we're going to apply the maths f dot ping pong. And then we're going to use time and time time times that by the speed that we declared. In this case, it'll be 2.5. And then we want to put in how far we would like it to move. So we're going to move at 5 on the x-axis. And then we can just transform the y position. And also transform uh, the position for z. So let's save this, move back to our Unity, and now we want to apply the script we've just written to the cube. So I'm just going to select cube and bring it across and drop it underneath. You'll see the association here in speed. So now we should be able to test our cube. And we've got a right left movement. Now if we change our speed to zero, the cube stops. 1, or if we change it to 10, it speeds up. So if we want the cube to stop in a position, we can actually just put it to 0. Now we've done this, we can also control the y-axis by going back into our code. I'm going to copy this whole line of code, paste it below. I could actually put them in to the same line but it's a good idea to do it this way that way they're individual so I'm going to copy this and put it in the Y transform position and then I'm going to take the Y transform position above and paste that over the X transform position here so we're only working on the one axis per line of code so in this case here Just need to close this bracket off. It's now transforming the Y position. So let's save that and view that. So it's just moving five positions on the X and five positions up the Y. If we want to change some of the parameters, we can actually go back in to the code, adjust one of the speeds to say three, Save that, and now run the program again. You'll see that the X and the Y are adjusting at different rates, and therefore we get more of a figure eight sort of occurrence. Now if you want to animate another object, all we need to do is duplicate the cube or add another object onto the stage. I will then just change its position so we can see the two cubes. Oh, let's undo that change the position so you can see the other cubes then what I'll do is just select the second new cube apply that code to it as well well with the duplicate it's already done that for me but if you put a new object on there you can just drag that back and forth to that new object and that will use the same properties Otherwise, you can make new scripts for different objects that go at different rates, and one might be working purely on the x-axis, and the other one might be working on the y-axis. 
and there's also the z-axis as well which is just adding another line of code and adjusting the z position so when it runs now we've got two cubes moving around using the same script so if you found this tutorial useful give it a like and subscribe to my channel have a look around my youtube channel for other useful unity tutorials and good luck with your game development